we're talking about Zalatath for a fucking change, right? And we're talking about how Zalatath is clearly appearing in Season of Discovery right now. I, I feel like we're beyond any doubt at this point. Clearly Blizzard are putting Zalatath in there, whatever. And, you know, I don't think it's, mis I don't think it's like just a fun little reference. I think they genuinely are doing the lead in to the War Within story through Season of Discovery. I love that. I think it's brilliant. I genuinely think it's like the most ambitious storytelling that WoW has ever done if they are doing that. I think it's incredible. I love it. I wish I was on the team. I wish I was on the story team, which is not something I usually wish at all, but I wish if this is what they're doing, I wish I was on that team. I wish I could do it. I wish I could be involved with that. Sounds amazing. That's what I think they're doing. Anyway, it got me going back and doing some research and reading on Zalatath that I hadn't done in a while. And that involved going back, reading all the books in uh, Forbidden Reach. It meant going back and, and doing the Shadow Priest artifact quest lines again. It meant going back and doing the BFA quest lines again and reading everything about Zalatath in game that I could. And something that I had honestly forgotten were the in-game rumors about Zalatath's as in the Blade of the Black Empire, because they won the same back in Legion, her origin. Zalatath, Blade of the Black Empire, part one. It's not very big on the screen. I'm going to go to it in game and bring it up there. Wait, how do I get to the, how do I get to the priest? Oh, wait, this isn't a priest character. That was a stupid thing to do. Uh, yeah, Ryla, you know, cut all this shit out, okay? <laughs> Make it look like I, I, I got there really quick. <laughs> okay, so... Here we are, and uh, I need to be a Shadow Priest, which I am good. And if we go over to the, like, the annals or whatever it is, you know, the thing that kind of gives us the history on our artifacts, and then we get to Zalatath, Blade of the Black Empire. And the in-game rumors regarding Zalatath's origins, they were in there, like, you know, back in the back of my brain, but it's really interesting to read it again. Zalatath had its dark genesis in an age long before the Horden Alliance, an age when the legendary old gods and their black empire engulfed the world in shadow. There are many theories concerning the blade's creation. The more outlandish claim that it is all that remains of a forgotten old god who was consumed by its kin in the early days of the black empire. That's a really interesting one, and I think it's probably, a, you know, a, not an unreasonable one. If, you know, Blizz decide to ever kind of reveal her origin properly, which I think they probably will. The idea that she's the fifth old god is an interesting one and not impossible either. I feel like, you know, in the Forbidden Reach with all like the progress reports and stuff, all this before Forbidden Reach, but the progress reports that you get from Uldum, uh, Uldum yeah, uh, in, in Dragonflight do seem to confirm that there, there was a fifth old god at the very least. Um, and that could be foreshadowing for the reveal that Zaltath was the fifth old god, right? Um, it makes sense that she would be trapped inside of a dagger if she got consumed by the other old gods. It would make sense that she needs Nazoth to let her out of the dagger, if, if that is the case, if she's the fifth old god, right? It makes a lot of sense. I think it would be fun. But the one that really got me thinking is other theories state that Zalatath is the claw of Yasharaj, ripped from the old god's monstrous form and bestowed upon its servants for use in ritual sacrifices. It's one that I kind of always ignored a bit, you know? We used to talk at the beginning of uh, Legion as if Zalatath was the uh, the claw of Yasharaj. It was super interesting. I enjoyed it as a lore theory, but it fell out of uh, it fell out of fashion. To believe that one but i'm thinking about it a lot right and i put this on twitter and i mentioned it in the video but i thought about it more after editing the video and putting it up and i'm not saying i definitely think this i don't i'm not saying i definitely think this is the case but i definitely think that zalatath could be yashiraj legitimately I, just from talking about this on the video and, and watching the video back and stuff, I am definitely of the opinion that Zalatath could be Yeshiraj. And I'm of the opinion, and I wouldn't have thought this before, but I'm definitely of the opinion that I think that would be very, 
very cool. Questions. That's the obvious one, Ramsey. Thank you for asking it. We've been told that Yishiraj was ripped from Azeroth by the Titans, yeah? Exactly. And killed by the Titans. And I think that would still be the case. So here's the thing, right? This uh, history, the word of the Conclave, which is just, you know, like recorded history. It's just from people saying stuff. And it's recorded as like a, an outlandish claim, right? But if it were true and Yeshiraj ripped out his own claw and gave it to his followers to worship, right? Then a thousand years later or whatever, like a million years later, the Titans turn up and they rip out Yeshiraj and kill him. His dead remains all fall back to Azeroth, mostly land on Pandaria, and that's what causes the Shah and stuff. But what if his claw wasn't just like a dead bit of fucking fingernail? What if his claw was kind of like a horcrux? So it wasn't just an inert appendage that he ripped off, but it actually contained part of his consciousness. So when the Titans ripped Yashiraj from the Earth's crust, created the Well of Eternity, etc., etc., and killed him, there was still a part of his living consciousness in the dagger, and that is what Zalatath is. And, well, let's call them they, right? They are, they are an old god. They can take up any voice or form or anything that they want, you know? Um, so the heart is something that fell back to Earth, right? I, I, I'm, I'm right. When when he was ripped out of the Earth's crust and, and torn up by Amonthul, um, the heart is one of the parts of him that fell to the Earth, you know? And it had immense power and corrupting power to it, but it didn't have a conscience. It didn't have a consciousness. Whereas my speculation is that like like a Horcrux, he left some of his consciousness in the claw. It was dangerous being an old god man. They were at war with each other and with the uh, with the uh, elementals as well, even before the uh, the the titans turned up. Uh, Zalatas seems to operate a lot differently than we're used to seeing with the old gods. No, well that would be part of it, right? And here's the thing: that would mean that Nazoth knows that uh, the dagger that Zalatath is Yeshiraj, which is why he needed a deal to release him because they are like you know essentially enemies. That's the thing you got to remember about the old gods, right? They don't like each other. They're always fighting for dominance, and and it's one of the things that kept the Black, Black Empire in check. Honestly, was the fact that you had these different old gods fighting against each other. Um, if that's what she is, and she went home to the void, is it possible she went back to overthrow the original Void Lords or some other interaction? That would be really cool as well. I really, really like that. We never meet, uh, met Yashiraj in game. We don't know what they are like. Exactly, exactly. Yashiraj was dead long before we ever got here, you know? Um, he was killed by the Titans. And I love the idea that this Zalatath who has basically made so many players simp for her just by being a kind of a bit mischievous and a bit sassy and a bit cool. Like, that is actual manipulation there. That's genuine manipulation. The thing that people tell us the old gods are really good at, but that we've never really seen in game at all. Because like, Nazoth is meant to be this master of manipulation, right? But when we see in, in, in BFA, like, he's like the least manipulative person ever. He's just like a big, deep-voiced fucking god, like all WoW baddies, right? If it turned out that Zalatath was actually Yeshiraj, that would be mind-blowing. And think about it, right? What happens the first time you meet Zalatath? I'll show you. I've got the video right here. Yes, the blade is right. I am unstoppable. Once Sakaj lives again, I will hold dominion over this world. Sorry, that's as high as it's going to go. I chose to work with pawns. I choose the real power. Okay, so what happens is when you fight this guy, I accidentally fell down the edge and died there. Uh, but when you fight this guy, the dagger uh, obviously abandons him. This is part of the story and becomes your friend instead. But then the first thing we she does, uh, so this guy is is a is a, a, an old god general, right? Who he was trying to use the dagger to resurrect. 
The Twilight Father did not dare wield me, for he knew the price of failure. Give me another chance! And then the first thing she does is drain the energy, the essence, from this dude. Just drains it. And it's like, oh, okay. All right. Sure. And in the histories, there's stuff about her draining uh, void from sources as well. And then when we see her again in BFA, she sends us to go and get this void stone. And when we do get the void stone, she drains it. She drains the energy out of it and then resurrects in the body of this high elf, Inanis, and becomes Zalatath. And like... She's got a habit of draining the energy and power out of sources of void energy, hasn't she? And, you know, maybe she just needs that to live. Maybe she needs that for energy or whatever. Or maybe because there was only a little bit of uh, Yashiraj's consciousness and power in the Blade of the Black Empire, his own claw, maybe he's been spending the last 10,000, 100,000, however long it's been, years trying to get that energy back so he can become as powerful as he once war was again maybe that's why they want the essence of galacrond yeah maybe she drained us off too or galacrond exactly exactly and that's pretty cool maybe that's what all this has been about it's just, she's just been taking this long going from mortal hand to mortal hand encouraging them to do these crazy things so that she can like you know when we first pick up the blade we have to go and kill naga who are void infused don't forget like naga were created by the void it's fair to imagine they've got quite a lot of void energy in them we kill the naga i killed some you know other things by mistake first we kill the naga to fill up a literal fucking bar and feed zalatath just saying it's not beyond the realms of possibility and you're right uh gore howl um the void version of gore howl in the siege of ogramar which you know is corrupted by yeshiraj the heart of yeshiraj is called zalatoth or something it's got a very similar name to Zalatath. And people are just like, oh, well, that's what a void corrupted weapon is called, a Zala something. Yeah, or maybe specifically a Yashiraj Zalato. Zalato, thank you. Zalato, and this is Zalo Claw. How did the blade end up on that altar if the Shadow Priests have it? It's a very fucking good question. Her voice line, if you're a priest when you do this quest, is like, why did you abandon me or something like that? And uh, her voice line here is like, the priest was very short-sighted because we we uh, expend all the artifact power that we we uh, spent the entire expansion saving up in Legion to um, neutralize Sargeras' sword, don't we? What would this point to lore-wise if it ends up being true? Great question, Shower Bees. Now, mostly, it would just be fucking cool. Ah, uh, yeah, exactly. Now she's using the Nerubians to get the blood of Cthulhu and Yogg. Exactly. And that could well be the story that's being told in season of discovery you know um yeah like if she and you know we used the blade of the black empire to uh disable the carapace of nazoth which eventually allowed us to go and defeat nazoth so there could be some kind of mission that she is on to absorb the power of the other old gods maybe that started with nazoth in the Nihilotha raid and in BFA. And maybe you're right with uh, the Nerubians and going back and, you know, Silithus is a thing in uh, in Classic and therefore uh, in, in uh, Season of Discovery and Anchorage, there could easily be this thing where she's trying to get the blood of, uh, and, and like the essence of old, old gods, you know? Um, and that works just as well as a, as a theory for whether she's like the forgotten fifth old god or Yashiraj. And the more I think about it, the cooler I think it would be if she was Yashiraj. Because it would just feel like more of a trick. You know, if it turns out like uh, she is the fifth old god, that's cool, okay? 
I think that's really nice. And you're like, I can't believe I helped the fifth old god. That's that's wild. But if it, if she turned out to be your Shiraj, I would legitimately feel tricked. Not so much now because I predicted it. But when I thought that she might be a Shiraj, I was like, oh, the betrayal. The betrayal. Holy fuck. Okay. What do we know about Midnight? What do we know about the story of Midnight? The Void After the Sunwell. Okay. That's the story behind Midnight or the story that we know. They are, they want the Sunwell. What is the Sunwell? The Sunwell was created with waters from the uh, Well of Eternity, right? The Blood Elves took some of the Well of Eternity. They created the Sunwell. Is that right? Correct me if I'm wrong. The Well of Eternity doesn't exist anymore. It's the Maelstrom. But what was the Well of Eternity when it still existed? It was the hole left by Yashiraj. The Well of Eternity was where Yashiraj was. That's where Yashiraj was in the earth. That's what created the Well of Eternity was when he got ripped out by Armin Thul. That, like, the open wound became the Well of Eternity. The Well of Eternity doesn't exist anymore, so if Yashiraj wanted to be reborn again, he couldn't use the Well of Eternity where he used to be. What's the next best thing? Something made from the water of the Well of Eternity, the Sunwell. I'm just saying. Uh, what about Nordrasil? Sunwell's more fun. <laughs> I'm just saying. It makes sense, right? Uh, wasn't the well a source of arcane energy, not void? Yes, the the, uh, the well of eternity was a source of arcane energy uh, because it is literally the blood of Azeroth, right? Um, but, you know, it wasn't Yashiraj that made it arcane. You know, it was the open wound and the blood flowing through that made it arcane. Uh, but what I'm saying is, it is where Yashiraj had chosen to burrow into the earth and try and infect uh, Azeroth. You know, because it's when he was ripped out of that and it was the hole left that became the Well of Eternity. So maybe he knows that he left behind some corruption in the waters of the Well of Eternity. Why not, man? If you, like, do a poo in some water, okay, even if it's a real chunky one, if you rip that poo out, that water isn't clean to drink. There's still poo traces in that water. And if you took a little drop of that water and created a sunwell out of it, there'd more than likely be some traces of that poo in the Sunwell as well. Maybe that's what he needs. He's like, there are still some traces of my life force in this water. Why wouldn't there be? I put it into terms that I knew you'd understand and relate to. <laughs> but why arcane energy? Uh, it should have been pure Azerite coming out of the well. Well, no, like, um, okay, so if, if Azeroth is a Titan, which I don't believe she is anymore, but that makes perfect sense because Azeroths are beings of uh, arcane. It makes it makes perfect sense that her blood would be arcane energy. In the same way that an old god's blood would be void energy. Or like a, a, a demon's blood would, would be full of like fell energy. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. I don't actually think she is. Yeah, so, so it's making more sense the more I think about it. Like genuinely, right? You know, the sun well could be ha said to have a Yashiraj link. It's made from the waters that were taken from the wound left in the world when Yashiraj was ripped out of it. You know, it seems like a tenuous link right now, but there's no way you can't make that a much bigger link by being like, yeah, there's still, you know, little did you know that my essence was very fucking present in the well of eternity. Uh, someone made a really good point about the interaction between Aleria and the sun well. Well, I mean, when Aleria touches uh, her husband, who's full of light, right? An explosion happens because she's so full of void. So if you wanted to blow up the Sunwell, you could do a lot worse than chuck her in it. Is that what the theory is? I don't know. Is it more interesting than that? <laughs> but yeah, if I wanted to blow up the, uh, the, the Sunwell, you could do a lot worse than just throwing Aleria into it, to be honest. But anyway, I, I, the more I think about it, not only the more feasible, and notice I'm saying feasible instead of likely, right? But the more I think about it, the more feasible I think it is that Zalatath could be a Shiraj. And you know what? Yes, the more I think about it, 
the more I like it. Because I would feel so tricked. I would feel so betrayed if she turned out to be Yashiraj. I would feel like completely manipulated. I would feel completely fooled, much more so than if she turned out to be the fifth old god or whatever. I'd also feel like really happy because something I, I kind of came up with out of nowhere would have turned out to be true. And to be true, and to be clear, I'm not saying I think this will happen, but I definitely think it's possible. And the more I think about it, the more I really, really like it. Because we know, like just from a story narrative point of view and for creating danger. So like there are many advantages for me uh, from a story perspective, with Yashiraj, with, with Zalatath being Yashiraj as opposed to, well, okay, so before I've always described uh, Zalatath as like um, Nyarlathotep, right? The cosmic traveler in Lovecraftian uh, mythos. I've always seen Zalatath as being like the daughter of like a void duke who's on her gap year. You know, she did some traveling, she got into some scrapes, but, you know, she's she's like privileged and landed enough to be able to get out of those scrapes, right? It might take tens of thousands of years, but, you know, whatever. And that's how I've always seen uh, Zalatath. I always quite liked that. But I think it's probably more likely that she'll turn out to be either the fifth old god or Yashiraj. And from a story point of view, the advantages of her being Yashiraj are vast. It's a baddie that everyone knows, but no one thought that we'd ever encounter. It's a dead baddie, like a mythical dead baddie, like Galakrond, right? So it's it's a legendary name, which is always really good. And it's one of the few legendary names we've got left in WoW. So there's that. Oh, uh, Sod being Cthulhu would make perfect sense. Yeah, yeah. Like, so I I think it'll turn out that um, one of the climactic raids, if not the climactic one, in Season of Discovery will be a rework of Silithus. And it turns out that you you have been helping Zalatath consume Cthulhu's essence in Silithus. That's what I think. I think I think it, it it makes sense. I think if if there's like a if there's a uh, a Silithus raid in, in Season of Discovery or whatever a rework of it in any way. And Zaltat is like, well, thank you so much for allowing me to consume this essence. See you in the future or something. Be so cool, wouldn't it? Wouldn't that be amazing? Like that is an example of trans storytelling done right, in my opinion. The idea that something important could happen in Season of Discovery because Zalatath time traveled there to get something that she needed for War Within. Mind-blowing. I love it. I love it so much. I really, really hope it's what they're doing. And yeah, it seems like first for something like this in this media. Yeah, totally. Like, it would. I don't know if other MMOs have done anything similar. Hard to see how they would have a chance to, really. Uh, but wow, having these different versions of the game sets it up for this so beautifully. They can do something, like, amazing. And I just really, really hope they do. I really hope they do because it would be so cool. But anyway, Yishiraj, uh, her being Yishiraj would be great because it would be a legendary name. It would mean more than some made up fifth old god, wouldn't it? You know, if Yishiraj turned out to be, sorry, if, if Zalatath turned out to be Yishiraj, you'd go, Yishiraj, rather than if she turned out to be Slurpy Slurp Slurp. No one's going to go, oh, Slurpy Slurp Slurp. Legendary! No, like, there's just more kind of currency in the name of Yashiraj, right? But there's also that thing of, we know Yashiraj was the most powerful old god. Like, out of all of them, Yashiraj was the, the, the badassest one. So, it's not just like another old god at that point, it's the best old god. It's like the one that was so strong, but we had we were like, we'll never have to fight that one. And I think I think that's really important. For me, though, like I keep on saying, I'll say it one more time. For me, the absolute best thing about it would be I would actually genuinely feel that I got played. Like I would genuinely feel that I got played. If my naifu, Zalatath, who I unashamedly simp,
who I think is an amazing character, who has genuinely made me like her. And I think most people will feel the same, you know, once they, they get to like see her in, in uh, War Within and stuff like that. Watch her die in the first raid of War Within now. <laughs> but I would feel genuinely betrayed and tricked and, and had and played if Zaltath turned out to be Yashiraj. Legitimately. And that's something this game has never made me feel before. And it's something the old gods should make you feel. This theory also explains why Zao would part with Galatkrond, who would have a bigger beef vendetta with the Titans uh, other than Yeshiraj. Holy shit, you're right. You're absolutely right. You mean Eridicrom, right? Uh, but yeah, yeah. Like, it, it, I mean, you are right. It does make sense that... Um, yeah, Yashar's main aim is to be reborn and, and take over the world and, and like, you know, eat the world soul or whatever. But also, yeah, you can see why they would also be up for kind of beating up the Titans while they're at it. Because, yeah, it was the Titans that specifically killed Yashiraj. That's very interesting, isn't it? And you know what? The title of Harbinger, which is what they call her, Zalatath is the Harbinger, okay? There's no doubt about that. And the title of Harbinger fits an old god much better than it fits like a void being. Because the old gods are literally Harbingers. You know? They are the scouts. They are the ones that go to the planets and find the planets. They're zapped out into space and they land on planets. And like, you know, it's like they are the literal Harbingers of the void because they get there first. A Harbinger, yeah, whatever. <laughs> You know, I also like, I love the theory that someone said in my chat just now of maybe she went back to the void and killed them all. In the same way that Sargeras killed the Titans. What if Yashiraj is like, I'm free and it's been a really shitty million years and I kind of hate the void so as well do, right so now. So I'm going to go and Together. fucking kill them. Wait. I don't know how you'd make that work, jelly but I love it. I love the idea that she just went and killed yes. everyone in the void. Do you think that Ashara will ally with Zalatath? The Nagas speak about the Harbinger in A Song of the Depths. I'm really glad you brought up Ashara because that's another thing. Uh, going over these old um, books from... Uh, the Forbidden Reach, to read specifically about um, Zalatath, it was very, very interesting because I went back to that book. So this is the first page of the Song of the Depths. Uh, rise, rise, our queen calls to us from beyond the umbral veil. She has transcended the circle of the stars and basks in her eternal grandeur. Now we know that Zalatath is the harbinger, they are definitely talking about Ashara in this first paragraph. It was kind of unclear who they were referring to, whether it was Zalatath or whether it was Ashara. And I think a lot of us assumed that all of this page was about one person. I know I did when I read it. Like, it, looks, it feels silly to think that reading back over it now. But I think I assumed that whoever they were talking about in these two paragraphs, these two big paragraphs here, I think I assumed it was the same person. Now that we know that Zalatath is the harbinger, they are definitely talking about Ashara in this first paragraph. Rise, rise, our queen calls to us from beyond the umbral veil. She has transcended the circle of stars and basks in her eternal grandeur. Ashara is in the void. Ashara is now in the umbral veil. She's there. She's now a void entity. That's what she is. We will see her when we go to the void or something, or when the void attack or something like that. That's definitely what they are referring to. And that's kind of wild too. That's like really exciting. Not like Ashara has anything to do with the Well of Eternity or anything. Well, quite. Exactly. Exactly. Um, I wonder if Ashara would be part of the League of Baddies with Zalatath and Eridicron. I certainly hope so. Yeah. Well, I think she's basically a Void Lord now. Ashara. It certainly seems that way, right? When was the last time we saw her? She was imprisoned by Nazoth, right? In, in Nihiloth. She was imprisoned by Nazoth, wasn't she? Yeah, she got whisked away uh, when she um, released Nazoth. And she was basically imprisoned there. And then we did the football game. And then she just fucked off. 
now we know that she ascended the circle of stars. Yeah, she talked about taking a new throne. Did she fucking kill the Void Lords? We were just saying, wouldn't it be fun if it turned out like uh, Yishiraj had, uh, well, Zalatath is Yishiraj and had gone and killed all the Void Gods. What if Ashara did that? What if she's taken the Void Throne? I have no idea how she'd be able to do that. No idea at all. But what if she did? She spent her entire existence as, uh, you know, a Naga serving an old god. It would be kind of cool to get Zalatath, i.e. your Shiraj, i.e. an old god working for her. She's too fabulous to be stopped. I mean, I get that, honestly. Maybe she just picked up, you know, loads of tips from the two times we beat her. The Void stuff is uh, much more interesting. The Primalists give off serious uh, crap Transformer vibes, in my opinion. Well, I think the Void will be done and dusted by the time we deal with um, Aridochrom, to be honest. I think uh, I think the Void will be gone by the time we finish Midnight. I think the, the climax of Midnight will be us dealing with the Void. Our next big video, like non-weekly reset video, is going to be me basically predicting the entire story of the World Soul Trilogy. And... And, and you know the story of each expansion, and I I kind of think that I kind of think that midnight will be the end of the void, and furthermore I think we will defeat the void. The titans will turn up because you know they heard the world soul was in trouble because it was, but we sorted it out. It's fine, but the titans turn up, and I think Iridicron kills them. That's how I think midnight finishes. That's what I think the end of midnight is. Aridicron killing the Titans and giving away a cool thing. So the end of WoW, no, you still got the whole last Titan to go then, mate. So kills all of them except one. And I think the last Titan, he's strong enough to do that. Dude's got a plan. The dude has got a fucking plan. You know? Um, and I think the last Titan is Sargeras. I don't think Azeroth is a Titan. I think everyone's fighting over uh, Azeroth. And I think she would have been born a Titan if everything gone according to plan with the Titans. Metzen said uh, Midnight would include the unification of the elf tribes. Wouldn't Ashara have a part to play in that? She's not an elf anymore. She's not an elf. No elves, no elves like Ashara. But yeah, maybe. Is she a first one? I think world souls are how Titans and Void Gods and, you know, maybe Naru and stuff. I think that's how they are born. And I think, but they are like blank slates. So imagine, right, that there was like a ball of energy that had like a rock grow around it, okay? And the only way that humans could reproduce and dogs could reproduce and bears could reproduce was to find one of these rocks and infuse it with your own essence. And if I found it first and I infused it with human essence, it would be born a human. But if a bear found it first and infused it with bear essence, it would be born a bear, right? Imagine that, but on a cosmic scale in WoW, everyone's fighting over these world souls because they're using them to procreate. The Titans are good at finding them and birthing new Titans. But the Void are just doing the exact same thing. We call the Void kind of imprinting on a world soul corrupting because that's what the Titans call it. But the, when they do it, they call it, you know, nurturing. When I when I jizz on a rock, <laughs> it's born a human, right? Like genuinely, I, that's that's my you know, I don't have many theories. I I like to I like to do speculation rather than theories because that's more fun basically because like with speculation you can have like multiple contradicting speculations it doesn't matter because you it's like well this could be true or this could be true or this could be true and all of them are fun and it's fun to talk about and that's that's how i much prefer doing speculation but i with with the world soul thing that's just genuinely what i think now i'm fine to be wrong i'm 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 placing no kind of self-worth or emotion in this theory if it turns out to be something different i'm not going to think it's bad <laughs> You shouldn't do that. <laughs> so much. I'm and and so the more I think about it, the more I want Zalatath to be Yashiraj because I think it would be such a fucking cool twist and one that genuinely makes sense. Let's go through some of the replies that I got on my tweet when I said this. You know, test the waters a bit. I think Zalatath might be Yashiraj. If she were, wouldn't there be some tale of shah related energy from the time Pandaren priests were able to use her in Dagon form? 
um wouldn't we get some kind of yasharaj like vibes off her yeah i, I mean so the, the shah were created by yasharaj right or from his energy that, that fell to earth with the bits of him when he was ripped up and when priests are using and, and pandaran priests for that matter are using the blade of the black empire they would if if she were if she if it is the claw of yasharaj yeah they'd be getting some yasharaj vibes off of that definitely but they might not know the difference between Yasharaj and just like any old, old God. And you could argue that the, if it's weird that they don't notice that, I don't think it is, but if it were weird that they didn't notice that, you could say that, you know, the Shah were created by bits of Yasharaj's dead body. It was like his energies and stuff, but it was his dead like corpse and the, the kind of corruption lingering around that. Whereas this speculation posits that Zalatath, the actual consciousness, Zalatath actually literally is Yasharaj. Like, not a remnant of Yasharaj, not like an echo of Yasharaj, not like a, uh, a like some lingering corruption from a bit of Yasharaj, but is literally Yasharaj's consciousness. So I don't, th I don't think it contradicts. Put it that way. Wasn't she talking about some battle between Nazoth and Yasharaj in third person? Yeah, well, I mean. That would be to trick us that she's not Yasharaj, right? She wouldn't say me, would she? If she doesn't want us to know that she's Yasharaj. But it would explain why she knows so much about Yasharaj. Uh, can we ask Rathion? I, I think, like, the visions that Rathion had after eating the heart of Yasharaj have been proven to be not great in hindsight. I think she's one of the moons. Uh, Zala Void Powers is uh, connected to the Cosmo. Uh, yeah, yeah, Zalatas' uh, void powers do seem connected to like the greater uh, void cosmos rather than old god stuff. Sega but is a surely Susan ten times. Oh, he ate the heart of the here. Thunder King. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, I don't think so. For one very basic reason, Yishiras has a very distinct visual and thematic style tied to him with the black and white colors of the Shah. I mean, the, the Shah are black and white. But yeah, okay, sure. Uh, Zalatas is very purple. True. True. I think there's a shark color scheme for Zalatath, though, the Blade of the Black Empire. And she's just appearing how she wants to. Uh, Zalatath's pers uh, personality is way too different to how all gods related beings behave. Yeah, but she's not different from how they're supposed to behave. You are right in pointing out that the way Zalatath talks in game is very different from how old gods talk in game. And the way she interacts with us and gets us to do things for her is very different from how old gods do it in game. But I would argue it's actually more accurate to how old gods are supposed to talk to you and how they are supposed to work in game. They are supposed to tempt you and make you think they're cool and like trick you into doing things, which is exactly what she does. Like, she makes you want to do things for her. Like, you're right, you're right. Nazoth isn't anything like that in-game, but he's supposed to be! <laughs> like, that's that, that's just an example of them always doing old gods kind of fucking wrong. <laughs> you know? When um the biggest fucking mistake WoW ever made was not keeping Nazoth as fish Nazoth all the way through BFA. If they kept Nazoth as a, a smooth-talking fish all the way through BFA, he would have been a vastly superior baddie. Uh, my take is that Lovecraft references don't match up. Zaltath is much closer to Nihiloth Nihilothotep type being. Yes, yes, I agree, Mego. And I've always said in the past that I saw her exactly as a Nihilothotep. Yeah, Nihilothotep is always the one that uh, I've compared her to. And I, I still think that from what we've seen of her, which is why I would feel so tricked. Because she's really made me think that she's something else. And, and you know, like, it's it's obviously completely feasible if if the Blade of the Black Empire was uh, Yasharaj's claw, which it's it's theorized in-game that it was. It's obviously possible for Zalatath, uh, Zalatath to be Yasharaj. That's fine. You can't really argue that. I think on the balance of things, it's unlikely she will turn out to be uh, Yasharaj. But... I would love how tricked I would feel. I would love how I'd be like, well, you're nothing like an old god, which is exactly what an old god who was good at being an old god would make me think, right? 
<laughs> like, that's exactly it. It's like, yeah, you did not seem, you made me think you were this complete other thing. And that's what an old god would do. One who is, like, an old god who's actually good at being an old god would absolutely do that. <laughs> You know, and would absolutely fool me like that. And I'd be like, I was convinced you were this thing. Uh, so, yeah, anyway, that's my that's my um, idea. I really love the idea that uh, she could be um, Yashiraj. I think she definitely could be. I don't think in the like on balance, she'll actually turn out to be. But I just love the idea so much. And I had to tell you about it because I just I, I really love it. And it would make me. It just excited me and it's just a fun thing to talk about and I hope you appreciate that. So yeah, like and subscribe, share the video with your friends.